Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Jump because he started my clock. Yeah. So I'll go fast. Yeah. So management of Paravalula League, I know we saw a little uh, case. I didn't prepare for that case, but this is uh, something similar, so just to know. First, at the time of tower. So I just wanted to show you, this is Cleveland Clinic, our large room. Of course, we don't use anything. Uh, no Foley, no swan gas, no arterial line, no general anesthesia, one person there. I showed you before that I use one, uh, one sheath on the top uh, and then stick just below, as you see there, on the right hand side. And so it looks like this. There are two sheets, large sheath, small sheath. Small sheath has a straight flush catheter, big tail. I use Sentinel in all cases. So this is a patient that is a young patient and uh, we are doing a valve replacement. So again, I leave a straight flush catheter. So this is instead of pig tail, a straight flush, so you don't have to remove it. And then we are deploying the valve. So we deploy the valve. And after the valve deployment, always do an aerogram. Now, I know that we saw much more AR than this, but this AR is not acceptable to me. Uh, so this much AR, uh, we will not accept. We would say that this is a, at least moderate AR uh, in a young person. So I put a plug. Fairly easy, straightforward, just cross with the wire, put a plug. So this is, a, a, at least in our case, and then follow-up echo, not analyzed by me. That's why I put the report there. The follow-up echo has to be done by echocardiographer who is not afraid of me or anything like that. So they would write whatever they think is the correct statement. Because this is very important, independent assessment. So he says no AR, trivial AR. So this is outstanding. And the AR assessment, of course, we do it with a good aerodogram. And with a good aerodogram, and I do an echo, transthoracic echo, and then lower the aliasing velocity. So instead of 60, you go to 40 and check it, that if there is AR or not. If you see AR, this is no good, you know. And if you can hear the AR, so please use the stethoscope. If you can hear the AR, this is not acceptable. How many times we send patient to surgery and we hear AR, right? This is, this is what you're supposed to do. So we cannot accept an AR that you can hear. Hemodynamics, very important. So just check where exactly is the uh, how diastolic pressure, LV and diastolic pressure. And there is one important thing that if you see the dichrotic notch too high, that is also not good, believe it. So the dichrotic notch should be at 50-50 of the descending limb. So if it is a little bit high, we wrote some papers on this, so something that you may not know. This is from Cleveland Clinic. So I just put the data so that you understand. This is for five years, we have done 3,000 aortic valve replacements. So 3,000 aortic valve replacement. Mortality is 0.4%, 30-day mortality. And anybody, you know, in CPR we do it, we we count it as a tower. Stroke is 0.5%. All strokes, minor, major, everything. AR more than 2 plus is 0.4%. Equal to or plus 0.4%. And new pacemaker, 2.9%. So this is, this is the standard at which we are hoping to work. Otherwise, we cannot do tower because our surgeons do better job than that. They are doing exactly the same job. So their, their operating mortality, their all these things are very similar. So if I'm going to do a low risk tower, I got to have this data. And these are all the patients that we report. Okay, on follow up. Now this is a patient, interesting, I think is worth seeing. Uh, so this is a 77 year old lady. Uh, she had a tower done in outside hospital, Evolute, 2019. So now four years out. I, this is just two days ago. You see that this is real. Two days ago, means just before I flew, I treated her. So that's why I brought this patient. I said, maybe it is interesting. I didn't want to do the same case over and over. So I said, something new to do. So here, this patient, 2019. And if you look at this, patient has a uh, AR, which doesn't look, you know, too bad. Evolute valve is very tricky. It was very long. So the, by the time it exits from the ventricle, the AR doesn't look bad. So you can see here, the AR is not bad. Two hospital admissions. Initial BNP in 2019, four years ago, was 205. BNP, they didn't do NT4 BNP, but 205. And now she's short of breath, and her BNP is 10,000. 
four months ago. So the, the physician calls me, he says, Samir, something is happening. I don't know, can you please help? Evaluate the patient. I said, okay, uh, what is the best thing to do? So I compare the echo before tower and now. What I find is that the AR looks very little, but the LV is dilating. I said, the LV is getting bigger, NT pro BNP is increasing. This is not a trivial AR. I said, please send her to me, let me just see her. She comes to see me, I listen to her, she has severe AR. So I said, this is a patient who has, is, doesn't need anything very fancy, you know, I just stethoscope. So I said that this patient has a significant AR. It doesn't look significant, but LV size, as you can see, is bigger. So I said, okay, we do a TE. A TE also, the guy says that, no, SMR is maybe two plus AR. So, because again, and very important thing to understand that the AR always happens, because technical side, AR always happens at the commissure, right? Because you are not going to leak from the leaflet and the valve. So AR, when you want to cross, uh, plug the leak, you have to remember that you are going to cross at the commissure. So it's between the left and the right, left and the non, non and the right, whatever but it is at the commissure because it cannot be in the middle of the valve because the rest of the valve is touching. So here it is between the left. So the, I put the red as a left, yellow as a non and blue as a right. And so it is between the uh, left and the non right there, just so that you remember. And then of course I check the aerodogram and again, you know, everybody grades it differently. I would consider this a very significant AR. If you fill up the whole ventricle with the dye uh, just above the valve, this is not a trivial AR. Uh, so, and then I check LVDP, it was 24, diastolic pressure is 45. So we said, okay, what will we do? So how do we close this? Very simple, conscious sedation, no TE, eight French arterial sheath, I'll show you what we did, and uh, here. So in my mind, I now know in RAO view, where is the left and the right coronary sinus, non-coronary sinus. So I know that that is where I should cross with the leak. Uh, and in the LAO view, there should be the leak. So I'm trying to adjust my catheter, AL1, to come out through the right hole in the, say, in the core valve. Which is very important to come through the right hole because if you are crooked, it's very difficult or you can pull out the valve. So this is very important to keep in mind. So here, this is what we are crossing. Uh, and this is live crossing again. So see, I adjusted the catheter a little bit so that it is coming out there and coming out there. We have a biplane room, so I can floor on both sides so I can tell that how I'm crossing. Uh, but this is live crossing and I didn't speed it up. I have an ice catheter there. So the ice catheter sometimes helps me to uh, know where, the, where I'm looking uh, in terms of uh, things. It should cross in a second, but uh, anyway. Uh, so we cross there, there it is crossing. So, you know, it is holding it there and then in a second, you know, I don't want to waste time. Okay, there, so it crosses uh, the leak. Once it crosses the leak, you can confirm that you are outside. So the, I went very RAO because you cannot cross in that kind of view, it is 88 RAO. And then turn the catheter, see if it's across or through the valve. So it was across. And then when you want to put the sheath, you have to use the size. So now very simple, six French uh, cook sheath, 110 or 90, depending on the height of the patient. And see, I'm crossing uh, using the other side of the aortic wall. Very simple. And then put a 12 millimeter plug. I like 12 millimeter plug because AVP2 is the best, in my opinion, easiest and best. And it goes with the wire. So six French sheath, it goes with the wire. Very important that when you are removing the, unsheathing it, you push the other wire so that you don't pull out the valve. Because you can pull out the valve because you know if you are on the corner when you are pulling, unsheathing the device. And then just do an aerodogram and we did an aerodogram and there is no leak. So see compared to what we started, there is no leak whatsoever. And the LV and diastolic pressure is less, hemodynamics very important. Uh, and again, localization is perfect because we flow road and this is where the device ended up where, this is where the device ended up. So again, do everything with flow road. Uh, and again, do a biplane aerodogram, again, to make sure that we didn't miss anything. There is no AR. Uh, this is ice, in case you are interested to know that where the ice looks. 
And so assess AR critically, treat in the lab if you can. Uh, be, uh, you know, I think you have to match up with surgery. Do not, you know, do not try it because if surgeons do surgery and then the echocardiographer is us looking at the valve. So you have to be as critical as you are uh, with surgical valves uh, and uh, try, to do the, try to do the best and not accept moderate AR because this is where uh, it is not fair to the patient uh, that uh, people who can be surgical candidates that we do and then we leave moderate AR. Uh, behind. So uh, this is at least my uh, personal opinion and this is what we practice uh, in Cleveland Clinic currently. Thank, Thank you.